G'day, Rob Draper here. Welcome to the channel. I'm going to be uploading lots of videos over the next few weeks, so if you haven't been here before and you're new to the channel, just click on that subscribe button and the notification bell so you can be sure to, to uh, get notices when I upload new videos. A lot of the videos that I'll be uploading will be approaching cinematography from a slightly different viewpoint to the way you've probably seen them done before. I'm not going to be concentrating so much on the technical, I'm going to be more on the creative and the artistic. And one of the things that's uh, constantly on cinematographers' minds at the moment is how do I get the look of film? I'm going to answer that in just a second. But if we go back and you talk about the look of film, the question really is what does film look like? Now there's only a couple of people who actually know what the real look of film is and that's the DP and the colorist. Uh, largely because with, for years we've been tra transferring 35mm and 16mm to tape and, and now to obviously to digital. But in that transfer process the DP and the colorist actually get to see what the 35mm negative uh, actually looks like and it looks surprisingly like video once it's been through and color corrected in its raw state it actually looks like uh, a log c uh, a log c digital the the idea of a negative was that it would be very flat in terms of uh, the characteristic curve so you'd get a nice expanded latitude and be able to capture everything from the highlights all the way down to the shadows without burning too much into the highlights and, and burying everything down in the, in the shadows. So, so essentially a 35mm negative was a log C digital file in a way. Uh, once it went into color, color grading, uh, then the thing was snapped back up and it, was, uh, and, and it would look surprisingly like, uh, like video. And especially back then, we were transferring 35 millimeter on uh, flying spot scanners, and and it, and it looked quite sharp, but nowhere near as sharp as the 4K and 8K that we're we're seeing today. So how do we go about recreating the look of film? Well, right now everyone's using LUTs and look files, e filters, uh, post color grading. There's everyone's trying everything to get the look of film. But the further we go from uh, into 4K and now looking into 8K, the further we get away, to me, from the, the actual look of film. So the question is, what actually is the look of film? The way people assess the, the, the way film looks is based on what they see in a movie theatre. It's not based on what they see on TV, because what you see on TV looks a, a lot like video. So the illusion of film and the, the feeling of film and when people talk about the, that textural thing that you can't really put your finger on, what they're really talking about is they're, they're talking about what they've seen in a movie theatre. So, so let's look at how that breaks down because that really gives us a clue to how we go about recreating the look of film. So let's go back and we'll look at it. So, so how does it work? Well we get a camera and we load it up with film and the film runs through the camera and it stops in the gate uh, while the shutter opens and exposes it and it's stopping and starting and stopping and starting going all the way through. It's taken out of the, out of the uh, camera, loaded into cans, it's sent off to the lab, it's run at high speed through a hot chemical bath and then it's printed onto a, onto a work print, it goes to editing it comes back, the negative's cut, the negative runs through an optical printer to make the print, the print then runs through the, the chemical bath, then the release print is shipped off to FedEx and FedEx drives it to the airport and they put it in the airport and it's loaded onto a plane and the plane flies off all over the country, all over the world. Then the film turns up at a theatre somewhere and, and either the projectionist or the guy selling popcorn pulls all the rolls out, puts them onto a, a rewind, winds them all through, splices them together. They're picking up static electricity, getting dirt and dust and everything else on them. They're then loaded into a projector. Generally, the projectors are running their lamps at, at a lower foot lamp at reading because they want their bulbs to last longer than possible. So you're not seeing the full 
brightness of the image on the screen. The registration pins in the gate are worn, so the film is jumping around in the gate. It's going through a lens that generally hasn't been cleaned, it's got dust on it. Then it's projecting through two angled pieces of glass, uh, you know, 100 or 200 feet across a room onto a screen that could be 40 or 50 feet wide. The screen's full of holes, there's speakers behind it, so the screen's vibrating. And we're looking at a, at a little tiny 35 millimeter film that's blown up to 40, 40 feet wide, 40 or 50 feet wide. So what are we actually looking at? What we're looking at is the worst resolution you can possibly imagine. If you ever got up close to a, a movie screen, you'd realize that what you're looking at is terrible resolution. You're not looking at 4K, and you're certainly not looking at 8K. So destroy it. Destroy it as much as you can. Make it look more like a, a, a Turner painting. Uh, break it down so that there's lots of texture and there's lots of, lots of feeling and mood in the, in the image rather than being these laser etched images that we're getting so used to. Get the softness built back into it uh, that, that everyone's come to look at as being the, the actual look of film. So that was a mouthful, but hopefully there was something in there that you'll be able to use on future projects and get your mind going and thinking about uh, different ways of approaching your cinematography. Um, as I've said earlier, click on the subscribe button notification bell so that you can make sure you get updates when I upload new videos. If you've got any comments on what I was talking about uh, today, just uh, write them in the comment section below. I'd love to hear your thoughts and anything, any questions that you ask, I'll get back to you with answers. So in the meantime, thanks for watching. We'll see you real soon.